use all those search terms and search criteria to find new work for their CVs. You can, people can write recommendations of each other's work, which are positive endorsements of the work. Theaters can record their coverage privately about a peak of play. They can sort of make notes about the script. And um, we are about to launch, in about a month and a half, an opportunities module, which basically allows a theater to go on and say, I'm looking for three plays about climate change by women from Kentucky uh, for my new play reading series. And the new play exchange will, bing, find all of the playwrights who are women in Kentucky who have plays about climate change and let them know about the opportunity. And they can then tag their plays for that opportunity. So the system will eliminate all of the noise in the, in the submission process and turn it into something sort of revelatory. So that's the new play exchange. That's what it is. And um, I'm a little biased. Um, <laughs> I've spent half a decade making it happen, uh, and really traveled the world, not the world, but the United States anyway, talking to playwrights and artist directors and literary managers and agents and publishers to make it happen. Um, but I really believe it's, it's the new thing. It's going to be the new way that playwrights and producers connect, and the more that you all can have and maintain presences there, uh, the more effective you're, you're going to be at having your work at the ready. Because right now your plays live on your hard drive, or even your agent's hard drive. And when people do a search, they can't search onto your hard drive unless they're the NSA. Right? <laughs> so uh, putting it into the place where they're searching changes that entire equation. And remember, there's still 25,000 new plays a year written in the United States and 2,500 produced. So 90% of plays ever written don't get produced. <coughs> this is a, a, a lack of understanding we all have. Like The success ratio looks like one production in a decade. Yeah. Right? One more point. If you're ahead of that, you win. Right? <laughs> you win big if you're like three, four, five product new world premieres in a decade. So people, it's about putting your play there and making it possible, entering yourself into the conversation, but it's not going to be a panacea. Putting yourself there is not going to get you produced, right? It's going to make sure that you have as much of a seat at the digital table as everyone else. And that's the thing about the new play exchange is it's a neutral platform. It doesn't favor anyone. Everyone's plays come up in the search results equally. And that ultimately what will then win out is the quality of the work and the rightness of the work for the people who are looking for work. You know, if they want a five character farce about um, Mount Rushmore, they'll find all 35 of those. <laughs> <laughs> and they will just judge based on you know, quality. They won't be excluding people who don't have the right network and the right credentials. So step number one is go put your plays up there and talk about them and, um, and then share your links in social media, tell your friends. You know, we have playwrights now recommending each other's work, which is, I think, terrific empowerment. You absolutely should do that, you know, if you, and really, don't ask people to recommend your plays. Just start recommending other people's plays. <laughs> Create a movement. And the more people who are doing that, they are finding reciprocation and they're creating a culture. So this is starting, the scales are starting to turn. Uh, more and more people are recommending each other's plays just out of the kindness of their heart. And when they do, um, it comes back. So that was the first thing we wanted to say, but there's more to this session than... I, I might have a story that, that makes a good transition. Awesome! <laughs> Help me out. Um, I think that the people who use NPX are expecting to see playwrights on NPX. That's an important yeah. part of your digital presence. And I recently had a play that was a, a top 10 finisher of Woodward Newman, and I had a chat with the guy who runs that who said he had previously read the play on NPX. So I don't know if that helped, like when it came across as here's like our last 50, and he had already read it. But it might have, right? Yeah. So I mean, that's a way that it wasn't necessarily a way that I got a production, but it, it helped raise my, my level of awareness. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, it's proof that people are reading them, and that you know maybe that had a hand in it. So and yeah, I mean, so people want to know, artists want to know, because they're.
playwrights, here's the doubts playwrights have. Yeah, I'll use that, but artistic directors, are they using it? Well, about, we have about 2,580 users, and about 1,350 of them are playwrights. Mm -hmm. Right? So do the math. We have 53% women, as I said in the last session, um, and we have, um, you know, from, you know, a variety, a range of theaters. So, yeah, a lot of our theater members are Chicago storefront theaters and small theaters with niche audiences like sci-fi theaters. But the Lincoln Center has a profile on the New Play Exchange, right? Um, big organizations as well. So the Kilroys, as you know, put all of their uh, plays onto the New Play Exchange. Uh, the O'Neill finalists are there. Um, we're working with um, the Latina Theater Commons uh, and Howl Round to make sure that all of the plays um, there are up as well. So, you know, it's great work and you want to be in there with the great work because artistic directors understand that all the great work is there and this is where to go for great work. It's like not a, not a crazy equation. So, but what about Twitter? We should talk about Twitter. Yeah. You, you say something about Twitter. Um, I, 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 I was never on Twitter. Twitter. I was on Facebook and, and three years ago, at the somewhat virgin behest of Ian, um, I, I got on Twitter. And I have made connections on there. I don't, the thing is, my, my whole thing is that I think you have to have a digital presence that's everywhere. And I think if you don't have a website, I mean, there has to be somewhere that people go to look for you. So it was after that meeting where he told me that, that I really, I mean, I, I got a website. And I mean, I check the statistics every once in a while. And at this point, I think I'm getting like 100 hits a day on my website. I don't know what people are looking at. I don't know why they're looking. But at the same time, I've noticed more momentum in my own career and, and contacts, requests for plays, production. So I can't connect the dots. I don't know how that's happening, but I think you have to have the whole thing. Be active on Facebook, be active on Twitter. Have a website if you don't have one because if people go looking for you and they can't find you, they'll just go look for somebody else, I think. I think, and, in, and going back to NPX, the, the guy that I spoke to from the Woodward Newman also said that when he goes looking for plays, he wants to see the whole play on the NPX. He's like, if I get 10 pages, I'm on moving on. <laughs> That's a personal decision, and I know there's been debate about whether you should put up 10 pages or the entire play, but um, that's one per. And my, my thought is, you know, God, I send my plays out to so many places. What's one more where it's available? <laughs> you know? there are, yeah, there are, um, I would say, 80% of the people who are on the new play exchange have their full script up. And the reasons that are cited for people who don't are, well, the work is published. So Which don't undermine your yeah. publisher's <laughs> revenue by putting up the full script. I have two plays up there that are published, and I just have a sample and a link to my publisher's website. Um, and then there's piracy fears that people have. Someone's going to download my play and produce it without telling me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just because a script is more available somehow. Um, and your plays are out there anyway. Your plays are out there anyway. Work, they're yeah. out there anyway. They're in email, they're in, you they're, know. Yeah, they're all over the place. And it's like, if you're afraid of a bad consequence, you are also shutting off a possible good consequence. So, you know, I, I tell people, just don't be afraid. And then there are people who um, don't put up the full script because they're agents wants to tightly control the experience of who gets to see the play. And, um, well, you know, talk to your agent and maybe convince your agent to be a little looser about the new play exchange. I, you know, some agents have worked with us and have been thrilled about it and, okay, great, it's another them people work, that, right? another way people are gonna find my work. What do you say? It saves them. It saves them. Having to send things it, out. Yeah, they can point people, you wanna download the play, it's on the new play exchange. You know, they don't have to, 
and it, it's wider exposure for their clients. My own agent is fine with it. Uh, my own agent uh, is at Abrams, and he convened a meeting of 40 agents to try and tell them, hey, this is not a bad thing, don't be afraid. And, you know, 30 of those 40 were mostly great about it. So there's, there's some culture shift happening there, too. Um, but generally, I, I, it's, I, my age seems to be the medium. Clearly, it's older than me. Are a little like, what is this internet thing? Uh, uh, I don't know if I want to put my work out there. And players younger than me are like, it sh this whole thing should have existed 10 years ago. What are you old people doing? Why didn't you build this new play exchange when I was a teen so that it was already ready and popular? And I'm right in the middle, trying to make everyone, you know, get uh, yeah, along. Well, uh, so, yeah. Are there other media? Just talk about building a website. Yeah. MySpace. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I had written um, a children's book, and I called an old friend who was in PR and said, you know, I don't, I, I mean, I'm always marketing plays, but don't really have time to do this kind of marketing. And she said, if, if you have this budget, then you should start a website. So I hadn't even really planned to do that. But then once I started the website, then what I started. What is that budget? Um, I, I had like a couple thousand to spend, but now with Wix, I think you can do a website much, much cheaper. Um, I'm really not very computer literate when it comes to the back end stuff. I don't know how to do any of that. Uh, mine was free. I did a website that's free. And I, and I have a separate email address connected to my website, so I know who found me through the yeah. website, and I get three emails a week at least. Yeah. So that I would never have gotten or wouldn't know how to find me otherwise. You have so. to be able to be found, and I think there has to be an easy way to connect with I mean, and some people will find you through Facebook or Twitter, but the more ways and the easier it is to find you, the better. We live in an era where having a website is tantamount to having a resume. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You can't, you almost can't not anymore. And it is with WordPress, you can buy a WordPress theme that's fancy for $40 or $50 and build your own WordPress website in an afternoon. You can build a Wix. You, you, can. you really could. You can. You can. You can. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. templates are, are more and more robust. You, can, you know, yeah. Wix is another one. Squarespace is another one. There are platforms out there, too. You just have to, like, say, all right, I'm going to make an extra pot of coffee this morning. I'm reserving my Saturday. And I'm, by, by Saturday night, you'll be watching a movie and checking your website to see how, how beautiful it looks, oh, you know. Oh, mine was Weebly, that's what it was. Because I looked at all those other right. platforms and I couldn't, I wanted a page for each play where I could put a description of the play, put pictures of productions, put reviews, put everything I wanted on, and, and production history. And Weebly <coughs> didn't have like an unlimited number, so I have 15 pages. Excuse um, me, can you spell that? Yeah. W-E-E-B-L-Y. Like and it was so easy, I'm really not savvy, and I did it. And I've seen <laughs> some gorgeous Wix pages for you. But I do think that's really, really important. And if you can attach a blog to it, um, that's one more way to get people to your site. Although a blog becomes a beast, you have to feed. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. tough. <laughs> Well, if you, if you link to your Facebook and Twitter on there as well, it's one more way for people to to find you all over the place. And so even if you don't get emails from people, they might be looking you know, checking you out or, or friending you or whatever. It's a network. You have your Facebook presence, your Twitter presence, your website, your NPX profile, and you link to them all, and people go find you in different places, wherever they happen to be. I also started um, a Donna Hope Playwright Facebook page because I didn't want my personal account to be constantly slamming people with, you know, pic pictures from productions, but, you know, maybe some people want to see those. Um, so I have a Donahoe Playwright page and my personal page, and then when it's something big, then I will share it to my personal page. But that way, it doesn't look like my, you know, my personal page can have my personal life stuff and some playwright stuff, but it's not constantly all that stuff. I keep it reserved there. And, you know, I have like maybe half the people who are on that, and I feel like those are the people who actually want all that new content. Yeah. Uh, it's a we're doing dueling. <laughs> oh, um, go ahead. Uh, so, um, I have a, a couple of questions, and also something, I mean, uh, in response to what you asked about. Uh, I, it is apparently very important 
to um, Google yourself or to have friends Google you as well and click through to your site because that actually tells Google to raise you. Uh, there are other data builders, no other data builder playwrights that I've encountered yet, but there are other data builders. And so occasionally I'll sort of spread the word among close small group of close friends, and then, it, and then I actually can see the impact of that. In just, it tells Google to do a, to do a thing on your behalf, kind which it doesn't even know it's a thing. I know he's got more, there's a new, the, the, the trick to that is just yeah. once you build your website, set it as your own home page so that every time you open your browser, okay. it automatically That's goes there first wow. and then work from that place. Wow. Because really then you're doing awesome. nothing That's and right. it, it works really fast. You can add it as a Chrome and tab, a tab yeah. and Chrome yeah. and then just open it up even as a second tab. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, but my, my other, sorry, my question was, did you um, look at all at, uh, when you were building NPX, did you look at, at Kanji and uh, did you look at, at um, Indie Theater Now, which is a different kind of thing. I'm just wondering, because those are sites I have to be familiar with. Yeah, so... And I'm also on NPX, by the way. I know, I've seen you there. Um, <laughs> um, and in fact, you probably emailed me, because I'm secretly the tech support as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Not so I, secret. I, 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 use, I use a pseudonym on tech support, so that if I get emails from friends, I don't want them to know it's me. <laughs> lots of competing, and I really hate that word, platforms out there now. There's Indie Theater now is a publishing platform. Yeah, it's a different. Sam French is about to release, they have released in beta, a similar thing to Indie Theater now called Playwright Direct, which is sort of Etsy for playwrights. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, uh, the real most, so there is Kanji, but actually Kanji went dormant. And I believe is about to come back with a radically different product. What they have was very similar to the new play exchange, but they scaled it, rolled it all away, and they're, I, I would describe at least what I understand of what they're going to do as a kind of LinkedIn for artists or LinkedIn for writers. And I can't say much more about it than that. And but the new kid on the block, which is really terrific, is Tree Press which is based in the UK. And uh, uh, if you're watching Tree Press, hi. Um, they do a very similar thing to what we do. Their focus is <coughs> largely on plays for young audiences. Mm -hmm. And um, they go, they sort of combine what we do and what um, uh, Playwright Direct, the San French platform is gonna do because they also license plays. So what happens in the children's theater world in the UK is there are multiple authors and multiple contributors. And so licensing them because of the laws in the UK means you have to go to each person individually. So they bundle that all and make it easy to license plays. But they also have kind of kind of the search tools we have. They don't have the social layer we have. So in the new play exchange, you can also watch a playwright so that you, like if, if you are, as I am, a big Steve Yaki fan, when Steve Yaki uploads a new play to the new play exchange, you get a bing, check it out, new Steve Yaki play, so you get to learn about it as soon as anyone else. Um, you can also watch anyone in the new play exchange, and any time they write a recommendation, you get notified, oh my gosh, um, Andy Arthur has written a new recommendation, and I trust her taste and I want to know what she's doing. So you can sort of crowdsource your literary management from I love being able to watch. So I love being able to see what plays other people are, are commenting on. Yeah, and that's a great I like idea. other people, yeah. like, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Yeah, yeah. it's like, fun. Like, William just wrote a review of Lauren Gunderson's new play. I'm yeah. gonna go check that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. It, it's creating this kind of sense for us all that work is happening, and that people are looking at and thinking about each other's plays, which, when you're alone at your desk, it's not always easy to come by, right? So, to answer your question, yes, we've looked at them all, and in some cases there are potential ongoing partnership conversations, um, because we're very, we are the only one in that entire universe of options that is a nonprofit. All those others are trying to make money off yeah, of it. Yeah, we're trying to Yeah, and we're not. Like, ours costs money, but $10 is two lattes. The idea was, 
if you give a little bit of money to get in, then you're contributing to the ongoing success of the thing. And if we let it, you have it for free, um, you wouldn't value it. So well, we wanted to make, set the bar as low as we could so that anyone could get in. Yeah. I, I can't actually believe that I have a question, but I have a question. Um, wow. Uh, because I was a beta user, so yeah. I've been involved for so long, I don't actually know the answer to this. Like, does, if I link on my website to my NPX page, mm -hmm. do people, can people see it? Yeah. Anybody? Or do uh -huh. they have to pay the $10 to... They can absolutely see it, but okay. they can't download the play unless they're doing it. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. But yeah, they totally... But they can see your profile page and know that it's there, and if they want the plays... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The kill was, yeah, 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 yeah. We need to actually create a, an NPX logo that people can put on there. I they have the, it. The logo. Well, yeah, we have the logo, but we don't, yeah. So you just took the logo? That's yeah. great. Just we should just sort of make that easier. They, for people. Jordan, yeah, I, I mean, was talking about. Yeah, create a button that you can just. Play. At the board yeah. meeting, yeah. they're going to make it available to members. Like, the yeah, logo is a button that they have to pull it off the. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, so, like, that's why the kill was worked. Because every play, if you go to the Kilroy's.org and look at the list, every play is linked to its new play exchange profile. Um, and you can see them until you join. So yeah, so we're trying to find ways to partner and extend. I mean, there's four other secret conversations. I can't talk about. But um, you know, close your eyes and look uh, with other potential partners to try and because we don't, we don't, we don't want to. That there's a reason there was five organizations coming together, um, and NPN being a leader in the field, wanted to catalyze cross-disciplinary connections. And, and we are not building this for play. This is a room full of players, so I'm talking about it in a very player-centric way. But we wanted to build the tool for the good of the entire new play sector, right, for theaters and literary managers. Who, by the way, they. When they can record their private thoughts about a playwright, you know, for a literary manager, they get a job at Willie Mammoth, and they're the literary manager there, um, and they do all this work to provide coverage about plays, and then when they move on to the next job, all that coverage is gone and stays with Willie Mammoth. So their intellectual property, their thinking about plays, stays with the organization who pays for them in the new play exchange. It's always theirs. It's always there. Yeah, their property stays with them. I actually have a question, which is you've hinted at uh, some of the stuff that's coming down the line for producers, and I know I've talked to you on Twitter about some of the stuff that's coming down, but like, because it's such it's such an interesting, different experience because I have both accounts, yeah. um, and I know you said eventually they will be able to merge and it will be by the fall. fall. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm very excited about the different exchange, but just like the submission opportunities and sort of like what stuff, I know that's sort of like the second round of things, and I know this is a room full of playwrights, but sometimes if you hear about how the literary managers and the producers are looking for your work and what they need, it kind of gives you a better idea of yeah. what's going on. So the opportunities module is the big one that's coming. We're also going to let um, theaters create safe searches in the way that you do that. Um, it's sort of a combination of saved searches and Google alerts, or mm -hmm. like a kayak fare alert. So you set your criteria. I always want to know about sci-fi plays. Uh, I keep going to sci-fi, but okay, sci-fi plays um, by women, because I have a women-centric sci-fi theater company. So you can save that search and just with a click of a button instantly yeah. see all the plays that meet the criteria. But the NPX will now email you or we'll soon email you when a new play is added that meets that criteria so that you don't even have to go there. But when you, you know, you'll get, you'll have to go there to see the play. But you'll get an email for new plays meeting your criteria have been added. So save searches, emails. So in other words, for an for artistic director trying to fill slots, the plays are now going to come to you, mm -hmm. right? Instead of having to go look for them. Uh, but not just any plays, and it's not, it's not the playwright deciding to pitch you on their plays. It's this neutral computer that is doing the work for you to filter out the things you don't want to see, sending you just the plays you do want to see. Uh, so that's a big one that we're doing. We're, at, we're making it easier for playwrights to also upgrade and include, um, purchase the sort of reader package, which is let, lets you do all that robust searching and filtering. Um, we're adding links to the published versions of plays. We're adding a 
an awards history section to the playwright, to the play profile, and there's probably a dozen other small things that are not members, but those are the big ones. Okay. I have a question. Um, for the playwright, with a, a new play that you're working on and you are trying to get that first reading, that developmental you know, thing, is the new play exchange a good place to put that, or should we still go the traditional route of sending it to theaters that do development and so forth? Yes, and. <laughs> Do them both. Do them both. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I think there, there's a place that tells what draft it is, right? So yeah. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't actually say what draft it is unless you say this is the first draft, this is the third draft. But uh, you can upload new drafts. And, uh, and then your description of the play, you can say. You can say, yeah. Like yeah. it's a three sentence description of the play, this play, I'm looking for a. Okay. In this place of development, I'm looking for. There's. Yeah. There's you, can, you can make it what you that want it to be. be. That, right. that field is pretty open ended, so you can yeah. take advantage of that. One of the things we have found is that no matter how many options we offer for playwrights, we all want more. Because <laughs> <laughs> we want to see the world, the external world, reflect our own internal realities, because that's what we do for a living, right? So no matter how much flexibility I build into the thing, it's never enough for you people. <laughs> but the flexibility that's already there is pretty good. can be mm -hmm. yeah. harnessed right. in different ways. It all goes back yeah. to the same thing. You know, like people are thinking that the more flexibility you build in, the better their odds are of having their place found. Yeah, yes. Well, it's, I think it's partly that, and it's also partly why it's important to be in the digital space, right? You are starting... Your presence in the digital world, you were saying this in a different way earlier today, it's you starting the conversation about your work. It's, with the New Play Exchange, you get to describe it in the way you want. You get to use the search terms that you think should lead people to your work. You get to talk about your cast in the way you want to. You get to talk about you, you know, it's your synopsis. No, gone are the days where you get some esoteric submission packet requirements. We want you to take your name off of all but page 78 in your script. And we want you to append within PDF the, your life statement and a picture of your child and, and a blood sample and a coffee stain on page 43. None of this, like, loop jumping through. Your sample must be exactly 38 and a half pages, no longer. You know, none of that. Now, it's, all we ask you for is a sample. You decide, is that 10 pages, is that 12 pages, is that two scenes, is that half the play? You, you know, and, and artistic directors, likewise, have to take whatever you give them, right? So it's your terms. And this is more broadly true about social media. This is you becoming an interlocutor for your own work. You are your own best advocate. You get to speak up for yourself. And, and putting your reviews on Facebook is just another version of that. It's another version of saying, I'd like to start the conversation about my plays with how good people think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk there? Can we start there? Why not? Right? And I think there's something to the anecdote you shared earlier and this about, um, and what you were saying about all the things about how Facebook's algorithm work and works and Google's algorithm works is it's based on reciprocity. Like, the, like recommending other people's plays, sharing your friends' great reviews, <coughs> That, that is baked into the social network idea, and because it works, it's like that's how it happens. Like, oh, Deb, share that nice review I got, that's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Not only is it that I am more, as a human being, inclined to then pay attention and do something nice for Deb when I see her with good news, but it actually is mathematically built into the algorithm that by commenting on your good news or sharing your good news, I will see more of Deb, and Deb will see more of me. You and know, also, your 2,000 friends will see. We'll yeah. see right. who don't know Deborah at all. We'll see, oh, Deborah. I don't know who Deborah Zoloffner is, but now I do because she apparently is a friend of so and so who been to, you know what I mean? Like, that it, it, it isn't just, it's both a human response, but it is also just in the math of how Google and Facebook and all of them interact work in that the more you do that for others, the more you I, show up I have something a, a little yeah. bit tangential to say, just while we're talking. So once, once you've had your first couple productions, then you're generally not invited to the theater, because they can't pay for it, really. And you know, small theaters, which is where most of my work takes place, they can't 
okay to bring you out, and they don't think about having a conversation with you. It's like the play is published or it's been done. So with social media, I can't, I always get in touch with theaters that are doing plays that I want to be done more. It's like my play Esther, no, I want it to be done more. It's an old play, but it's one of my favorites. And so I can get in touch with them, and I can say, it's not a new play, but if you want me to do any interviews, or um, I'm very willing and uh, available to, to be interviewed. So I would never, nobody would ever think of contacting the playwright. I had three interviews this week for a 15-year-old play, because I reached out and I said, I'm, I'm available. And then all that's online, and I, I posted on my site all these interviews, and people are going, oh, I hadn't heard about that play. I mean, I really think you have to be, I used to think I'm, I'm sort of, I don't want to get in your way, I want to, I want to, I want to just be, be helpful to this theater by being a little invisible. And now I realize if I reach out to the artistic director and I say, how can I help promote the play? They're very excited to have you help promote the play. You're not a, you're not a problem, you're, you're a presence. So um, that was a learning curve for me too. And it's amazing, like I, I mean, I, I had seven interviews this week for, old plays, and um, so yeah. just reach out. And then just uh, yeah, putting yourself in the, their, their shoes and realizing, especially if it's someplace that's not a major urban center. Right, you so know, theater doesn't think you want to be. Doesn't think you want to be, be what I want to be. I, yeah, and I'll add on to that, um, that when I've been unable to travel to a production, um, I've asked if I can Skype in to, uh, to a rehearsal and to at least one performance. And I've actually started putting that in contracts because I want to be able to do that. But I've also done talkbacks via Skype if I couldn't travel there. And I found that, especially um, if you get a 10 minute play, and I'm a huge advocate for saying 10 minute plays are calling cards. Um, if, you, if you can Skype into a rehearsal and meet that director, that goes a long way. I mean, I've gotten full length productions because I've met the director and then they get to see that you're not crazy and they're more likely <laughs> to read your full length play. And that's huge though, that they have to know you're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> One play. If, you know, you can, I mean, use Skype and FaceTime. I mean, use it. So I can't tell you how many people have said, I've never thought of that. Nobody has ever asked me to do that. And I actually Skyped and watched my whole opening night in Romania. It was really cool. Um, so use that whenever you get the chance. Julie had a question way back when that we never got to. Um, yeah, well, it's, it, I guess, also slightly tangential, but last year you spoke about the uh, merits of social media, and I took note. And I've been very active on Facebook, but I'm still an awful twit. So <laughs> yes, you are. I, I was kind of curious how to use that platform. It just doesn't, you know. I, I keep trying to connect with it. And it just, I don't know. It just confuses me. So I feel like Twitter is is is, is just a new paradigm for communication, and either people instantly get it, or it's really hard to learn. <laughs> and, not, and, I, and I didn't used to say that about Twitter. I used to say, go, 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 go. It's amazing. And the, my, the simple fact is I've gotten more productions of my work from being on Twitter, more opportunities from being on Twitter than anything else. Yeah. yeah. And how, but how does that work? I mean, I, I'm excited by this, but then I look at Twitter and they want to feed me Miley Cyrus and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, uh, I, I follow a lot of people okay. who are people who inspire me, and I participate and engage. Twitter is a conversation, much more than Facebook is. It's, okay. all, it's not broadcast. It is chit-chat back and forth. It's about leaning in for a short amount of time, meeting people in this virtual world and connecting with them, and then not, and not talking about your plays. Like I find, yeah, that it's not about talking about your plays at all. It's about talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the the you know anything. Talking about the the what Supreme Court ruling is happening, and you build slowly over time these relationships with people who like I met Andy. Yeah, we became good friends on became Twitter. Good friends on Twitter, <laughs> not before and for uh, two years before yeah. we actually met in person. It's, and it's much more about. It, your personal voice. It is, yeah. And also
so it's like shouting. It's literally like if Dev and I were having a conversation with each other on opposite sides of a cocktail party. Yes. And everybody else, it's like, hey, how are you doing? I mean, like, and everybody can hear us. Like, even when you're doing it, it's like anybody can chime in. Anybody can become a part of that. And if you think about it in that way, it all of a sudden, it sort of drops all those walls down. But also it becomes much more about you as a person and less of a platform. I think Facebook is much better in terms of, especially if you separate it out, which I haven't done, but Facebook's much better in terms of promoting yourself and other people's work. And Twitter's much more sort of about, just a, literally it's a 140 character opinion about something. Yeah, and you can be really witty in 140 characters. You really can't have a tremendous discourse, but you, you can have more than you think you can in 140 characters, much more, and you can point toward tremendous discourse. There's people who post you know, links to articles, and that's sort of all they do, but the articles they do, they post links to are great. Um, but it's really, cocktail party is the great example. It is a perpetual, always on cocktail party. And you walk in and say, Steve! <laughs> and he says, put in! And Deb says, hey, you guys! <laughs> and all of a sudden, we're in a conversation. And it's just about that stuff. And then someone will, you know, someone will ask you a personal question about your play. And an artist director who's there and you don't even know it is <laughs> overhears it. And then you're suddenly getting a direct message or a Facebook <laughs> message or some other way. Or the critic from the Washington Post that you didn't know was paying attention to the conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree with your thoughts about criticism. That's what he does. That happened with, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, at TCG last week, um, yeah. a bunch of us from DC uh, were stranded at the airport in Cleveland. Our uh -huh. flight was canceled, right? So, I mean, we were all from different theaters and different, and but um, Jojo Roof. Uh, who's a Twitter, uh, well, she's a real friend of mine, but she's uh, <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, um, she and I were standing next to each other, and we were like, Jonah was like, you know, if we got a minivan, and I'm like, yeah, we can do it. All six of us can fit in this minivan. We're driving. We're totally driving. And so, I, you know, Jonah and I had to sell the other four people on the, the thought of driving six hours instead of waiting until 5.40 a.m. for another flight. But we did it. And we rented a minivan, and as we're waiting for the minivan paperwork to go through, I just tweeted, epic DC theater road trip about to happen, Jojo Roof, me, you know, and I tweeted the other names of the people, and this is going to be, what could go wrong? I was like, <laughs> 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 we were headed into thunder, into tornado warnings for a six hour drive, but we wouldn't get home until four in the morning. I was like, oh, and one of the women was 32 weeks pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like two, three tweets. Well, the Washington Post was looking, and they wrote an article about our road trip, right? That just, <laughs> that literally, it was within 24 hours, there was an article in the Post about our road trip. Wow. Because I issued two tweets about it, right? So that's like instant results. Yeah. So you've got to commit to it. You can't, you have to slowly over time cultivate your feed. Like I've winnowed my, I keep, I don't follow any more than a thousand people. I keep my number at a thousand because I feel like it can't, which is still a lot. And I have like 3,000 followers in exchange, but I don't, I don't try and make that number bigger. I just, it goes, it's like two, three, four a day. Just add to that. Roster. When I first started on Twitter, I looked at people like you and said, God, how do people get that many followers? And my son said, they just want to collect like dust. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, over time, I mean, I don't really actively recruit followers, and I have about a thousand now, without really trying to do anything. I mean, I live tweeted during the whole conversation really? in there. Yeah. My phone is probably heavy. With <laughs> right now. Good. People want to know. Sorry, I just uh, that, oh, I'm sorry. You had a, I, I have a follow up to this thought process, but those two have yeah. questions much longer than me, so let them go. Yeah. Can I approach from a slightly different angle? I know Mark is a representative of a theater over here. Are there any other theater representatives here? Uh, Mark, do you utilize New Play Exchange? I'm on the New Play Exchange. Um, I'm a playwright and composer. I don't know if you, that's that's my gig. I'm not running a theater. Aren't you Mark Rigget? 
No, no, Mark, Mark Brown is one. Mark Ruthier is on the new place, James. Nice to meet you. Does. <laughs> you, do, you do look like a, a sunnier Mark Ruthier. <laughs> oh, no, I, hope that's a <laughs> I hope that's a compliment. Anyway, it is. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I just wanted to get an angle from a skill representative how often they, they utilize new play exchange. I run uh, the Lost Girls Theater Company. We're a relatively new theater company, about two years old in Miami. I am on that all the time looking for plays. I will admit that my plays to read pile is much larger than my ability to get through it, even just, but it's mostly stuff I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool, that sounds really cool. I love it. We hear it over and over again from <laughs> theaters I keep telling us I regularly call it for new work. Yeah. yeah. I, find, I find most, most, when I've talked to various artistic directors about, about new plays, they say we have more plays than we know what to do with. Because there's still a lot of them are still operating under um, the submission model, and so they're still getting them over the transom, and people are still. I mean, I think we're five months old, right? We just started. We're a baby, and the submissions as a practice is about five decades old or eight decades old. So we have a long way to go before we change the the way these things happen. And what's right. different that nothing else has that I know of is the keywords. So yeah. if you if you've written a genome play, um, you know that takes place in the Grand Canyon, you put that in there, and if there is somebody actually looking for that, and there's enough people out there that somebody's looking for that, they will find that one play. Are so people looking at like I yes. can imagine yes. 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 Right, going, I've got to do yes. a play about the Grand Canyon. Yes. Yes. But yes. That's a weird or, kind of theater. Or a science. A, I mean, there's lots of. Like, I want to have some science play in my programming. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lesson here about also being smart about your keywords, right? Because yes. if you understand I'm writing a play about DNA research, right? You want to put DNA in there. You want research as its own keyword. You want science as a keyword. You want to start thinking about how so to how to tell. As an artistic director, what key, like what might you put in as a keyword? Um, we do plays that are. <coughs> excuse me. If we're mostly interested in sort of magical realism, so like stuff that's something specifically, I've looked up sci-fi plays, so I'm wondering if I'm subconsciously so getting you on that track. Um, I've looked up plays for uh, strong female characters is this thing I've looked up. Um, I've looked up fairy tales. Um, so style. St way, style, um, for me, is more than subject matter. I've also sort of seen how other plays that I've liked have tagged their plays, and I'm like, ooh, that's an interesting tag clip. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we get people who want to, I mean, uh, we get really interesting tiny keyword searches because people will say I'm going to do a reading in celebration of this holiday or in celebration of this event in my state and I want to make sure I I know all the playwright <coughs> plays about that subject you know I, I, but I love the immediacy of what you guys are talking about and that breaking down the wall yeah. and I assume that you enjoy it other you would just be Bringing someone along in conversation for two years, hoping at the end they'll want to do your play after they get to know you, like so it becomes its own thing. It's totally enjoyable. Right, but I, for me, I'm like, oh my god, I don't even know how do you find the time. Like, yeah, I was thinking. I, it sounds overwhelming. It sounds like if you want to have a presence on Twitter and here and there, and you, you really want to, how much time do you dedicate a day to this? I get this stuff? question all the time. I'm so curious as to how yeah. you two will answer it. But for me, I, I'm always there. It's in my pocket. Um, if I have 10 minutes, I might get on Twitter, you know, and just see what people have said to me and I respond to them. I might take 20 minutes in an evening while I'm, you know, waiting for the dishes to, to close to dry and get on it. Or I might watch the Tony Awards with a million of my friends by getting on Twitter while I'm watching the Tonys and you know, commenting about what's going on. It just, it happens in a variety of different ways. It can happen in four minutes, and that's enough time. Four minutes is enough time to have a three or four or five tweet exchange with somebody that feels like you've caught up with them. Like, like Steve is a great example. Like, I see him at conferences and, um, and on Facebook, but I might, um, if I see him there on Twitter, I can actually, deepen my friendship with him in five tweets. You can say, oh, I just saw a review of your play. It was terrific. Uh, when are you coming to DC? Oh, I'll be back in 
a month for this thing. Oh, we should have coffee. Or if we don't, though, because I'm going to be in Florida, blah, blah. you know, and if we just have a little civil exchange, but that enriches our, our real friendship. And I don't think happens. you can underestimate the value of something like that. I mean, I just recently got a pass from something that I sent to the theater and, you know, got a personal note that said, um, while we aren't interested in this, we're keeping our eye on you and hope to be able to work with you in the future. I don't think that would have happened. You know, it certainly wouldn't have happened because they wouldn't even know who I was. So I don't think you can underestimate the value of those little exchanges in just making somebody feel like you're less than a name. Yeah. Or more than a name. Wait, does, <laughs> does NPX track keyword searches by theaters? Because I'm super interested in we know. trends. Not that you can like see, oh, climate change. I've been curry to write climate change Because <laughs> then you're already behind it. But I, I'm just, I am actually curious about. No, we know. We what, just don't. I mean, there's so many things we would like to do. But sure. It's a little, probably a little big brotherish. For I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> keyword searches go into the body of the script. I, I know no, that. they don't. They okay. just search the keywords that you tagged in lately. Yeah. yeah. We have five minutes. I was just going to say I'm I'm absolutely bombarded with email notices on Facebook. I'm a talent agent. That's my job. So actors and models pursue me mercilessly, and I don't have the time. I'm, I'm trying to keep up and, and be polite with them and everything. So I have a separate world where I am a playwright, really. But that's my living on the other side. So somehow or another, I have to open a Facebook totally unrelated. Start to a separate thing. Yeah. yeah, and with yeah. playwright in, the, in your name. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for this workshop. Thank you. Vivian? Yeah. Martin. My question is back to something we were alluded to earlier, and maybe Steve is a good person to ask about this as well, too. In uploading new plays to the Playwrights Exchange, uh, what do you find is the most common point at which to upload the play? When it's brand new, third draft, after production? I've just uh, written a short play that's been picked up by a festival, and as I want to get more involved with the uh, exchange, I have no clue as to what the best timing is for uploading. The answer is when you are ready for other people to see it. Simple as that. So it's really unrelated with the whole concept of publishing, which they want. It's a whole. It's not thing. publishing. It, yeah. You know, it's there, and when you write a new draft, you upload that new draft. You just, just swap out the draft. Do you find that most people do the draft? I mean, early on, or? Do they wait until they really feel comfortable with it, maybe after a reading or something, before they shoot it up? I think you should put it up when you decide. It's no longer about seeking, making sure it's okay and seeking approval. It's about us. We have the power now. We can decide. And you should put it up when you are ready for other people to see it. And when you can change it whenever it. you yeah. want, unlike publishing. And, yeah. I mean, you can and you can use the field. Week. You can use the field to describe the play, to talk about where it is in its process if you want to, or what what stage it's in if you feel like you need to do that. Yeah. Um, but I think the difference is that you're going <coughs> to, when you put it up on the new play exchange, anybody can read it. Yeah. It's not like I'm going to send this to five people that I trust. It's like you shouting it through a yeah. megaphone. So it's whenever you feel like it's in that place. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah right. Because if you're OK with people seeing your work that's a little more raw, and possibly saying, well, oh, this guy, this isn't done yet, or this guy doesn't know what he's doing, mm -hmm. uh, that, that might happen. But you could have six productions, and someone's going to say, yeah. this isn't done yet. <laughs> 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 and you yeah. might be saying that yourself. That's fair. Yeah. You get a lot of action from the tremendous college market? We're starting to get more. Yeah. We haven't really built any specific tools for colleges. But we do have some um, guidelines for how colleges can use the new play exchange. You know, uh, people teaching uh, dramaturgy courses. You know, go have your dramaturgy students find and find and program a season using the new play exchange. You know, and make a case for why it would be a great season, and then write recommend read and write recommendations for the plays. Uh, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, the great advantage yeah. of, of college productions is you can often talk them into having you in as a guest playwright, which often exceeds the fee that you would get from your royalties. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
Um, just uh, to, to tie it up, though, it, it, great as the new play exchange is and, and the topic of this whole thing is that you still have to do the marketing to get people to that. You're not off the hook. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're just so all totally the other stuff the supports that so that people, when they look for you, find find your stuff. But they, if they're waiting through 1,500 playwrights, they still have to be looking for you. Yeah. Do you ever repost your link to your uh, profile in Twitter or Facebook? We were talking about that earlier. A lot of people do. And by by practice, if anyone tweets the new play exchange Twitter with a link to their profile, I retweet it just because I want to amplify the signal and encourage people to, to do that. Um, but uh, I, so, you know what's odd is I have not done it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it. You don't need to do it, right? I think that uh, for me, if I saw that in a tweet, it would, it would be noise to me because I still wouldn't know who that person was, yeah. which I think is the whole. But on Facebook, on Facebook, people do on Facebook, yeah. Same thing, though. I mean, I have to be interested in the person to be interested in their plays, and I think that's what this all comes back to. I wonder if maybe, uh, and I don't know, what do you think of the wisdom of this? Is rather than tweeting your own link necessarily, but having the link as part of your description, your profile description. So it should be in the footer of all your emails, right? Right. So that it's just by course, it's right there with the other links you have to your upcoming productions or your website. It should be um, in your Facebook bio. It should be in your Twitter bio. It should be in those places so that people who are interested in you, because they like the way that you talked about the Tampa Bay, whatever nice. team, <laughs> uh, is, uh, they'll, they'll find it. Um, but I agree that just sharing it absent context isn't particularly useful. I mean. It's different than sharing a review. A review is a, is a story about your story. Just sharing a link to your play is a little. But if, if you ever go on the official playwrights of Facebook group, which is like 7,000 playwrights. It's a lot of are cranky. A lot of I spend more time there than I would if I were the project director of the new place. So having. But I have gotten friends who there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the yeah. Go there and join and just see me. You know, well, I, I really don't spend a lot of time there, but literally, it was seeing that someone I knew commented on a comment in that group discussion in my Facebook feed is what me even maybe even hear of it. And literally on Tuesday, I upload the plays. Oh, so was that anymore. angry thread about the new play show? I'm but. telling you, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, no publicity is bad. <laughs> Because I, I was like, I don't even know what the, the people have this heated discussion about yeah. whether or not there's ever a, a, any payout up for, like, what the return on the investment is. This debate, I was like, well, I don't even know what they're talking about. So yeah. I clicked over to it and I was like, ten dollars. I kind of don't care about the return on the investment. Yeah, he's <laughs> I think we're at time, so um, thanks, Ed.